Hey guys, I've got a totally unnecessary video, which nobody asked for. I, <laughs> nobody has asked. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, take a look at my hat. See, I made these little things. I did one for Kermit, one for Miss Piggy, and one for Gonzo. That was fun. They didn't have a brown one. Otherwise, I would have done one for Fozzie Bear. Uh, anyway, uh, nobody asked for this, but I'm going to share my opinions anyway on Muppet Pride and Prejudice. Because I was listening to uh, the Moving Right Along podcast, and they were bad-mouthing the idea of Muppet Pride and Prejudice, which is ridiculous, because it's a really great movie. Uh, they haven't made the movie, but I really think they should. And I, I've got, like, three main reasons why I think it would be a good thing for the Muppets to adapt Pride and Prejudice. Uh, number one, Pride and Prejudice is a comedy. It's really funny. It, it's funnier than Wizard of Oz. It's funnier than Treasure Island. Um... Arguably, it's funnier than The Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol has a lot of jokes in it, and it's a very short volume. So, you know, it might have more jokes per page than Pride and Prejudice. But Pride and Prejudice is actually a really funny book. It doesn't really get treated as a funny book. It gets treated as more of a romance. But it's definitely funny. If you don't believe me, just, just read the first chapter of the book again. Uh, the first chapter is Mr. Bennett and his wife, Mrs. Bennett, and it's just the two of them talking back and forth. And you would not have to change a single word of this dialogue in order to make it a Muppet comedy, because it's just so funny. Mr. Bennett is always making sarcastic remarks about his wife, and his wife is always acting ridiculous. They're basically Muppets as it is. And, and there are other characters in this book which are just as ridiculous. Uh, like Lydia, the younger sister, she's ridiculous. Mary's also ridiculous too, but Mr. Collins, I think, is the big one that people point out. It's like, he's just such a silly joke character, and the joke is that he's just pompous and full of himself, and he will never stop talking, even though he's saying just stupid thing after stupid thing. It, it definitely feels like that's a Muppet joke. And, you know, you could argue some of the other characters are also, like, exaggerated like Jane who is the nice sister you, you could have jokes with her because she's too nice and I feel like that's something the uh, book does but uh you know the movies and various adaptations don't like to do because they like Jane she's a nice character but the joke with her is that she's too nice and too naive and she'll she wants to think the best of everybody even when they're just nasty to her if somebody like spits in her face and slaps her she's like Oh, well, you know, maybe they mistook me for somebody else. You know, that that's how, like, positive-minded and naive she is. I, I think people actually admire her for that, so they don't really see that as uh, humor. Um, a couple of other... What, what else was I going to say? Um, it, so it is, a, it is a very funny book. Um, a part of the reason I feel like um, the Muppets would be good... Uh, I remember now. So I, I was just, you know, like a couple months ago, saw like this thread on Pride and Prejudice with Pride and Prejudice fans talking about their favorite parts of the book. And there were like 20 different comments and, you know, they all had different ideas of what the funniest joke of the book was. And that's how you can tell a book's a comedy if there's at least 20 jokes in it that people say are the best joke of the book, right? So that's why I feel like Pride and Prejudice would be good for the Muppets, because it is a comedy, and the Muppets could really lean into the comedy in a way that hasn't been done in other adaptations, because other adaptations try to take it seriously. They try to be a romance, and nowhere is this more obvious than with Mr. Darcy, who's, uh, you know, the main character, and... <laughs> Lizzie makes fun of him so much in this book. It's kind of easy to miss the, the joke parts because she he's supposed to be like this fancy rich gentleman and she just makes fun of him. It's like, yo, no, you're not snobbish. You're just scared to talk to other people, Mr. Introvert. <laughs> and um, I feel like there are two reasons, like the parts where she really makes fun of him because, you know, this is kind of a bold idea that we're making fun of the incredibly rich, high-class person. Um... So, I mean, at the time, it's probably more bold than it is now. But uh, I, I think there are, like, two specific reasons that this doesn't really come across. Okay, three. Reason number one, uh, they don't really do that in the adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. They don't make the main handsome guy a joke character because they want to take him seriously. They want it to be a romance. It's obviously less romantic if she is 
if our main character is seriously making fun of him a lot. Um, uh, no, number two, like the two specific scenes where she makes fun of him the most, uh, those aren't parts of the book which work really well in like a movie adaptation. So uh, like the ones where, uh, one is like where Jane's sick, she, she's sick at the Bingley house. And then it's like 50 pages of just Lizzie uh, talking with Mr. Darcy. And I think most adaptations kind of just zoom right through that part because it's just 50 pages of talking. It's interesting talk, yeah, but uh, let's get on to the plot. Let's move past that scene. If you've only got a limited amount of time, it's definitely one that you can skip or at least like reduce it to a single scene. So I feel like that's part of the reason we don't get to see as much of Lizzie making fun of Mr. Darcy. And then number two, it's the exact same problem with uh, uh, Darcy's next big scene is um, because that's when Lady Catherine is first really introduced. And so obviously the movies focus on Lady Catherine's introduction and playing her up as a major character. And as a result, we, didn't, we don't get like the two to three chapters where Lizzie's making fun of Darcy. You know, they're in the same room together and he's like, stone cold silent kind of scared to say anything and she's like what is wrong with this guy uh whereas you could see miss piggy doing that very naturally like what is wrong with you she would be perfect for making fun of mr darcy and i, I feel like that's something it's an element of the original book that gets missed oh also that those that little part of the book also kind of gets skipped over because next is the really, really big scene where he proposes to her and ha you know, they, they have the big long letter. But it's like, you can understand why the movie would skip like the two to three chapters of him being really awkward and weird around her um, just to get straight to the proposal, right? Like, like cut that out of the book. So, um, uh, the, the Moving Right Along podcast specifically was mentioning uh, why uh, Muppets Pride and Prejudice would probably not be a good adaptation because uh, the characters, because, uh, you know, the Muppets are mostly male and Pride and Prejudice mostly has a female cast. That's actually part of the reason why I want to see Muppets Pride and Prejudice. I want to see more female Muppets there. Like, I want to see new Muppet characters that are female. That would be great. And Pride and Prejudice and Muppets is probably the best way to make that happen. Um, so, I mean, that's just me. But uh, personally, um, I feel like having Miss Piggy as uh, Lizzie, because she's the main character of the book, obviously Miss Piggy has to play that role. And then Mr. Darcy as uh, the human. And, and I feel like the jokes would work a lot better with her making fun of Mr. Darcy if he was a human, you know? And uh, as for the sisters, there are five sisters in the book, which is quite a lot. I'm surprised that most Pride and Prejudice adaptations actually contain all five sisters, because usually movies will just, like, you know, combine characters. Like Wizard of Oz, Glinda the Witch, she's actually two different characters in the Wizard of Oz book, but in the movie, they combine the two characters into one. I actually think that works better than it did in the book. But uh, I'm surprised that Pride and Prejudice adaptations don't do the same thing by getting rid of Mary and getting rid of Kitty because they're not important to the book at all. Uh, Mary basically has one scene near the start where she's basically embarrassing uh, Lizzie without realizing it. Um, so I kind of feel like Mary should be played by a human because she's the black sheep of the family. And that would be funny. It's like the daughter that everybody hates and ignores is a human and all the others are Muppets. I, I, just, I just think that would be funny. Also, Kitty, I think Kitty should be played by an actual cat. Kitty cat, because that's a stupid joke. <laughs> and I just think that would be hilarious if Kitty was a cat. Because Kitty basically plays no role in, 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 in the book. She's basically just... um. You know, Lydia, but less important. She goes along with Lydia on Lydia's various escapades. So Lydia is sort of like this carefree person. I feel like Lydia should be uh, Janice because Janice has a real carefree personality. Of course, Lydia is described as flighty, I believe, multiple times in the book. And she's also kind of really stupid. Like she's like, oh, 
la, oh, I only care about dresses and things like that. And it doesn't quite fit Janice's personality, but it is close enough. Janice and Lydia are both carefree. Um, it, also, the problem with casting Lydia is she kind of becomes a villain in the second half when she marries the villainous Mr. Wickham. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, she runs away to get married to him. Whoa. Whoa. So... Yeah, that's kind of tough with casting Lydia. Uh, I do want Jane to be an original Muppet because, like I said, I want a new female Muppet character. And Jane is the second most important, uh, second most important female character in the book. Um, arguably, um, yeah. I, I mean, you could make a case for Lady Catherine or Mrs. Bennet as, like, the, the main supporting actress. But I, I think Jane is, is... She's enough of a prominent role that it would be good for a new Muppet character. Uh, the downside to um, Pride and Prejudice, uh, you know, Muppet Pride and Prejudice, would be that there's really no role for Kermit the Frog, especially if we're having a human play Mr. Darcy. Then it's like, oh, there's... It's kind of hard to, to put Mr. Uh, Mr. Kermit the Frog somewhere. I don't know where he would go. Um, like, you can't make him be Mr. Bingley, who's the, the main supporting male character, because, well, then Janice would be dating Mr. Uh, 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 then Janice would be dating Kermit, and that would make everybody wild. So I, I'm pretty sure they'd probably make Mr. Uh, Bingley. If Janice is Jane... Wait... Now I'm confused. Wait, no, Janice is Lydia. See, I'm I'm dumb. Sorry about that. Still, there's no real good place to put Kermit in there. Um, probably Mr. Bennett, but then like that means he's married to somebody who's not Miss Piggy, so that doesn't work. I uh, can't be Mr. Bingley because Mr. Bingley falls in love with Jane, and that's Kermit not falling in love with Miss Piggy. Well, that doesn't work. So, um, and he can't be Mr. Collins. I I feel like. Mr. Collins, he's the one who's really awkward and full of himself. I feel like Fozzie would probably be good at that. Fozzie isn't pompous, but Fozzie is just as awkward as Mr. Collins when it comes to flirting and uh, romance and that sort of thing. Like, he, he's like, ah, I'm very scared and everything. And that's, that's Mr. Collins to uh, a T, I think. But, you know, that's just me. Probably Mr. Collins could be somebody else. Like... <laughs> There is no lack of male Muppet characters who could serve as the undesirable suitor. In fact, that's something they could probably add in. Uh, like, that'd just be a, a quick joke, like at the first ball, where Lizzie complains. It's like, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of suitable gentlemen here tonight. And then it just has a big scene of all the Muppet guys, like like Pepe and Gonzo and, uh, and all the others, just waving to the camera. And Jane's like, oh... I see what you mean, sister. <laughs> but yeah, that is the downside to Muppet Pride and Prejudice. There's no real good role to have Mr. Kermit the Frog be in, and it doesn't feel like a Muppet uh, you know, adaptation without Kermit the Frog, right? Maybe he could be the narrator or something else. You know, that's probably the best thing they could do is make Kermit the Frog the narrator. Actually, I kind of li like... Or maybe even make him the villainous Mr. Wickham. But then again, you have the problem where Mr. Wickham's, uh, you know, Kermit's not marrying Peggy. And I'm sure people would revolt over that. So, yeah, make him the narrator like he's done in a couple of other things like Emmett Otter. And um, I don't know, the Christmas toy. I'm sure he's been a narrator uh, of other stuff. Um, so those are just my thoughts. I, I just want to talk a bit about Muppet Pride and Prejudice, uh, unscripted, after hearing people say, well, that's just a silly idea. No, I, I think it's actually a good idea that has some merit, or at least, you know, people were excited about, like, a Muppet Great Gatsby, and I did, I was not excited for that, no, but on the other hand, I'm a big fan of Pride and Prejudice, okay? I, I, I've wrote I've written two Pride and Prejudice video games, uh, Pride and Prejudice and Murder, and um, the, the Courting of Miss Bennett, a Pride and Prejudice story. And those are both choose-your-own-adventure games. Um, I am amazed at how many people buy the Pride and Prejudice choose-your-own-adventure game that I wrote, because it's basically the, basically the book uh, you can choose to pursue 
any of the five bachelors, but it's still basically the same story as the book. So I'm really surprised at how popular it is. So I think like Pride and Prejudice is a bit more popular than uh, people give it credit for. Although really, if, if you ask me to come down to it, I think it's more likely that the Muppets will do something like um, Tales from Muppet Land, where they, they adapted a bunch of fairy tales, I think. I forget which ones, like Rumpelstiltskin, um, The Emperor's New Clothes. I think they would do something like that. I, I have said this in a previous video. I think they should do something like that with all the fairy tales based on Disney uh, princesses. I know we kind of got a book about that. You can check that out. You could, I did a review for it in my book review channel uh, where they, they adapted the Brothers Grimm. And uh, I feel like it would work if they did the same thing with like the Disney princess stories. So like they did a Muppet version of um, The Little Mermaid or Beauty and the Beast uh, uh, and then Frozen. It'd be all of them, let's say like a half hour show and, uh, and they do like six or seven of the Disney princess movies. And I feel like that would work well, that format, because because you're doing six and seven of them, it'd be easier for Kermit to like not be in one. Whereas if we try to do something like Muppet Pride and Prejudice or even Muppets Wizard of Oz, it's like, it feels like we've got to find a role for every specific character and we need to make them fit, even if there isn't really quite a good place for Kermit in that particular story. And that's fine. Kermit doesn't have to be in every story. And people wouldn't complain that Kermit's not in Frozen when he's obviously going to be in the Princess and the Frog one. And I also feel like Disney will be more likely to make a series like that just because it's cross-promotion, you know? Anyway, those, those are just my thoughts. I wouldn't mind, like, a series like that. Like, it'd probably be a lot better than um, you know, Muppets now, definitely. Um, okay, so sorry for going on this long rant about Muppets, Pride and Prejudice. Do I think it's going to happen? No. Um, should it happen? Yeah, I think it should happen. I think this would be good. Like, it's high on my list of, uh, like, classic books that... I don't even know what other classic books I would like to see the Muppets adapt. Like, I'd rather see them do Muppets Pride and Prejudice than, uh, The Wizard of Oz. Even though I love Wizard of Oz, I think Pride and Prejudice is just a much better fit for the Muppets because it's a comedy, because Miss Piggy can make fun of uh, the human Mr. Darcy in a way that none of the other Pride and Prejudice adaptations do. Even though it is true to the original book, if Lizzie makes fun of Mr. Darcy a lot. Okay, so I think I'm wrapping up this book. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. I I'm wrapping up this video. Wow. I okay, I'm stopping now. Bye.